3 John, verse 2, and Hebrews chapter 5. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all have that? Yes, sir. All right, 3 John chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's read that together tonight. Ready, read. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Hallelujah. We've been on this scripture here now for several weeks now. This is our foundation scripture for this series we're on uh, entitled Developing a Prosperity Mindset. I think we know by now that, that prosperity starts with a mindset. Yes, sir. Prosperity does not begin in your hands. It begins in your head, then it has to move down to your heart, then it will manifest in your hands. Amen? Amen? A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And so, but you got to get your heart right first in terms of prosperity. Uh, you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, all right? Now let's go over to tonight to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews 5, and um, I know where I want to go, but there's just so much in chapter 5. Hallelujah. Let me read verse uh, 6. It says, as he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now he's talking about Jesus Christ here, right? Yes, sir. So Jesus Christ is forever uh, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. He didn't come in the Levitical priesthood. He came as a priest in the, after the order of Melchizedek, the same manner as Melchizedek, right? How many of y'all remember Melchizedek? Yes. Genesis chapter 14, right? Um, Melchizedek showed up with Abraham. Abraham had gone and won a battle, uh, saved Lot and all the people of Sodom, and brought them back. And the Bible says Melchizedek showed up. He's the priest of the Most High God, King of Salem. And the Bible says there are three things that Melchizedek did. Number one, he he served communion. The Bible says he brought out bread and wine. Now, I'm calling it communion, but, you know, he brought out bread and wine. Bread and wine is always symbolic of covenant. Yes. Remember, God was already in covenant with Abraham. Yes. Abraham was already in covenant with God. Yes. The whole reason why Abraham won that battle against a whole army, in fact, a confederate army. Confederate. Uh, uh, I should say a confederation of armies. Okay. And he's got just him and 318 servants. Right. Servants. Not warriors, not uh, militia. He's got cooks and, you know, gardeners and, you know, painters and, you know, those guys. But the reason he won that fight was because his covenant partner went with him. You understand that? So he's in covenant with God. So Melchizedek shows up and brings out bread and wine, which are, which are tokens and symbols of that covenant. So he, he, he reminded him of the covenant, number one. Number two, the thing Melchizedek did was, the Bible says, and Melchizedek blessed him. He blessed him. He blessed him, said, blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. He blessed him. He, he pronounced that blessing over him. The third thing that Melchizedek did was he received tithe. The Bible says Abraham gave him a tithe of all. So the Bible says Jesus Christ is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus Christ, everything that, that he does, it works in one of these three areas and all three together. It all, you always see. He's going to always remind us of the covenant. He's going to always speak and bring blessing. And according to Hebrews, he also receives the tithes. Your tithe is what connects you to the blessing. Your tithe is what, what connects you to eternal life. You got that? Now drop down to verse 9 here. Verse 9 I know y'all sent it up a long time, but I got to, I got to send it the whole time. So y'all be all right. <laughs> Verse nine. And having been perfected, this is about Jesus Christ. He became the author of Zoe Sozo, Soteria, eternal salvation. 
He became the author. He became. He became. That's transformation. He learned obedience, and so he was transformed into the author of eternal salvation. For who? All those who obey him. So he's not eternal, the author of eternal salvation to just anybody. And not just to the Christians. You can't just be in church and enjoy eternal salvation. You have to obey him. Right? Okay, now this is who we're talking about here, Jesus. Now, so, <laughs> I could have given you all this later, but just get it now. He, he, he now has brought eternal salvation to us. He pronounces the, the covenant, pronounces the blessing, receives the tithes. So it, it opens the windows of heaven for us. In other words, we're, we're meant to enjoy an abundant life of prosperity. Yes. Now, but to receive that according to the, the book of Galatians, you can't be a child. The Bible says an, uh, that a child, an heir, as long as he is, he's a child, he's no different than, than a servant. So you and I have to grow up to receive what Jesus Christ has given. And most of the body of Christ is still infantile. Right? Most of the body of Christ is still a child in terms of the kingdom. But I believe we're people that, that are growing up very quickly. Right? Listen, let me tell you something. To handle what, what we preach around here, you got to be pretty much grown up. Because we're not serving milk. It's meat and strong meat and honey. Right? Okay. All right. Now let's look here at verse 12. Verse 12. Now remember, he's, he's operating after the order of Melchizedek. He says in verse 11, you've become dull of hearing. Verse, watch verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. Now, this is not talking about you. This is talking about the rest of the body. <laughs> For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. In other words, in understanding his righteousness or his right standing with God and his right to enjoy eternal salvation. Most of the body of Christ can't handle when you talk about being rich and living long and living strong and God doing it all. They can't handle that because they're still children. But when we grow up, we can handle that, right? Now watch this. It says where he's a babe. Now here's my key scripture, verse 14. But solid food or strong meat <laughs> belongs to those who are of what? Full age. Full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. All right. So I'm going to focus on that scripture tonight. I'm talking about again. Uh, this is. The series developing a prosperity mindset. This is progressive transformation part two. Subtopic tonight is training your senses. Training your senses. Training your senses. Lord, tonight we thank you and praise you for the word. Thank you that our hearts are ready to receive the word that which you speak. We ask you, Lord, to flow like a river into us tonight. Flow like a river. Revelation, wisdom, understanding, insight, utterance. Let it flow like a river tonight, Lord. We are ready to receive that which you speak. And whatever you speak, God, we'll, be, we'll jump all over it. And we'll accept it. We'll not deny it. We'll not reject it. We accept your word because we can handle it. We're not babies. We're mature. We're of, of, of full age. We can handle the strong meat. So speak, Lord. We, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, take your seats tonight in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Training your senses. This is going to be pretty interesting here, I hope, for you. Because as the Lord began to, to drop this on me, it was a whoa kind of thing for me. Hallelujah. And I hope, hope I can express uh, to you what he's put in me. Uh, clearly so. Amen. All right. Let's, let's uh, stir ourselves up again. You know, we do that each, each time on prosperity. Uh, so let's stir up, ourselves up. Let's go to the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. Glory to God. Y'all hurry up and get there now. Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. Everybody in, in, this, in the world talking about that 2020 vision. 
Hallelujah. Now, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about your eyes. I'm talking about everybody in the world got a plan. By 2020, we want to have this done. By St. Peter's got a 2020 plan or whatever it is. That their, their goal is that we want to end or reduce poverty by 30-something percent by 2020. Well, that's, that's, that's lofty. Because if you don't do it by preaching the gospel, right? Remember when, when John the Baptist sent his disciples to Jesus and said, hey, uh, are you the one or should we look for another? Jesus said, go tell, the, go tell John the things you see in here. He said, the, the blind receive their sight. The deaf hear. He said, the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The dead are raised. You know, those all are reversals. Those are all turnarounds, right? Yeah. And he said the poor have the gospel preached to them. Yeah. He didn't change his, his tone there. Right. In other words, uh, man goes from blind to receiving his sight. That's a turnaround, right? Yeah. So to get a turnaround for the poor, he said the gospel are preached to them. Uh -huh. Come on. So if the gospel isn't preached, if people don't hear or receive the gospel, they're going to stay poor. The solution God gave to poverty was preaching the gospel of, Je of the kingdom yes. of Jesus Christ. All right. So, uh, but let's look at Second Chronicles twenty twenty. So they arose. They rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, "Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Watch this first thing. Believe in the Lord your God, and what will happen." You shall be established. That word established simply means to be sustained. Yeah. Yeah. Believe in God and you'll be sustained. How many of y'all want to be sustained? Oh, yeah. yeah. The Bible says cast your burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain you. So it's good to be sustained. But sustained isn't, isn't the, the top level. No. Come on. Is it? No. He, he went on and added this part here. Believe in his prophets. And you shall prosper. Now, prosper is different than sustaining. Sustaining just holds you over. Right? Some, some of y'all tonight, you, you, you cooked your dinner or you plan on going to eat dinner when you leave Bible study tonight. But you ate you a sandwich. Huh? Got you a snicker bar or something, you know, to, to sustain you, to hold you over. Glory to God. Paycheck to paycheck, that's, that's just sustaining you. Government assistance, all it's meant to do is sustain you. You understand? Welfare, all it can do is just sustain you. It's not meant to prosper you. Hallelujah. Your paycheck isn't meant to prosper you. I don't care how much money you make, your paycheck is not designed to prosper you. It's only meant to sustain you. That's why when they give you a raise, they give you a cost of living increase. It's just to be commensurate or, or, or proportionate to the, the rise in the cost of living. That's going to sustain you. But if we believe in his prophets, the Bible said, it'll go beyond just being sustained. You'll go over into prosperity in everything you do. Now, that situation here wasn't about money. It was about there was a, there was a war, uh, an, an imminent uh, battle on, on, the, on their hands. But God said, if you'll believe his prophets, you're going to prosper. Yes, sir. That word prosper means to advance. It's the, the Hebrew word uh, salak, T-S-A-L-A-C-H, salak, which means to advance, to prosper, to make progress, to succeed, to be profitable. It also means to show or experience prosperity. So God says here through, through Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat, if you believe his prophets, you're going to experience prosperity. How many of you want to experience prosperity? Glory to God. That's six of y'all. Praise God. He gave a formula. Believe God, you'll be established. You'll get, you'll get back up to zero, but believe his prophets. You're going up to the top. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. As a matter of fact, uh, that word salak, T S A L A. CH, if I remember correctly, I don't have it in front of me, but down there in the definition, one of the, the meanings of it is break out. Some of y'all, you can verify, verify that for me. You pull up your little tablet, you do that there. Uh, it's, it says uh, to break out. So believe in the Lord. Do you see that? Believe in the Lord your God. You'll be established. Believe in his prophets. 
and you'll break out. How anybody here ready to break out? Break out of the box, break out of that level you're on, break out of that rut, break out of that same place you've been in for the last 16 years of your life. I'm ready to break out. He said, believe or pro- believe, tonight I'm your prophet. So just believe what we share tonight from the Holy Ghost and you're going to break out. Prosperity is a breakout message. Break out of your family status where you... Because because your mama was poor and your grandma was poor and your great great grandma was poor and everybody grew up in the projects. You right? No, break out of the projects. Break out of the neighborhood. Break out of that status. Praise God. That's why Jesus Christ preached the gospel to the poor. He preached them to break out of poverty. Glory to God. All right, let's keep going. I don't want to get too excited there. Let's go to Romans ten, New Testament. Romans ten. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Glory to God. Yeah, I want to break out. I'm breaking out. <laughs> I won't the world to know. I'm going to let it show. Because that salat means to show or experience prosperity. God's going to let your prosperity show. So much so, according to Jeremiah 33, verse 9, that they're going to fear and tremble when they see the goodness and the prosperity that God gives unto his people. All right. Romans 10. And uh, oh, I'm in Acts 10. That's the wrong book altogether. Romans 10. And uh, let's look at verse 12. Verse 12 says, for there is no distinction, no difference between Jew and Greek. Well, what God said to the Jews doesn't apply to us. What, there is no distinction. See, now that Jesus has come, no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Let that sink in for a second. All right, help me out, media. Get the Amplified Bible there. Amplified. Amplified. Y'all can read it with me? Amplified. Ready? 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 We ready. Are y'all ready, media? Ready? Read. No one, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord over all of us. And he generously bestows his riches upon all who call on him. I think we better call. We better call on him in faith. Praise the Lord. He he doesn't make a distinction. If you're a Jew, call on him. If you're a Gentile, call on him. It doesn't matter if you're black or white, red or yellow, whatever. Call on him in faith and he'll bestow his riches. You know, he has, uh, uh, yeah, oh, generously, I'm sorry, generously bestowed. No toil. Bestow means to grant. He'll just grant you his, his riches. Now, now it, that don't make sense for us to be so poor in talking about the body of Christ in general. Because. He told us, I'll generously bestow my riches on you. But the problem is, if we've not had that mindset, you can't get it. Glory to God. All right, let's look at one more place here so I can get into this revelation tonight. 1 Corinthians 9, 2 Corinthians 9. Thank you, Lord. All right, verse 10 and 11. Y'all have that? Now, may he who supplies seed to the who? Sower. So who gets, who gets seed? Sower. Sower. Now, now, you know in chapter 8 and chapter 9, he's talking about money. Yes. Right? That's, we, we, in this house, we don't have any, any dispute about that, right? We know in chapter 8 and 9, he's talking specifically about money. 
All right. So now may he who supplies money to the sower. Okay, that, that, that's why we can say money cometh because I'm a sower. Right, 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 right. And bread for food. Bread is still money. Supply and multiply the money you have sown. And because this, this is all—I don't care what I don't care what what you want to argue about. It's all about money. You keep going. All, you know, okay, no no argument about that. May he increase the fruits of your righteousness. All right. Verse 11. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. He says, while you are enriched. Uh, Give me get the NIV for me on that, please. NIV for me on that. NIV says now he who supplies. No, go to go to go and go to verse 11. We got verse 10. Verse 11 for me. You will be made rich. In every way. Well, that don't mean money. Well, what's every way? First of all, the whole chapter is about money. Now, don't take money out of this verse. Because your peanut mind can't handle it. It's about money. He's going to supply money to the soul. And money for your food. He's going to multiply the money you have sown. And then when he when it comes back to you, he's gonna make you rich in every way, especially money. Yes. As a matter of fact, that same verse from the God's Word translation, God's Word translation, says God will make you rich enough so that you can always be generous. Make me rich, Lord. He's gonna make you wealthy. What? Wait, wait, wait. Make you. That's no toil, Zamar. Make you rich. God, tell your neighbor, God wants to make you rich. Now, holler back, let him, let him, let him, let him. Let him make you rich. Stop fighting with God. Go ahead and stand with him. Let him make you rich. Why is he trying to make you rich? To establish this covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. He, he gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant. All right. Now. All right. So everybody say God's making me rich. Say I'm becoming rich. As we speak. Now you understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. You know, I got, got a lot of people, you know, a lot of, a lot of pastors watch our messages. I know. They, I know they do because they, they I, I know, you know, the, I know they do because the, the, I, I know the clicks, you know, I can, I, I can tell who's clicking on our emails and I, I know that stuff. I can find out and I know they watching stuff, but, you know, they, they watching from a distance. See, so I got to I got to say this. I got to preach this. I got to preach this. And, 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 and they're all watching, you know, people may snicker. But they're going to fear and tremble when they see. That, that's Jeremiah 33 verse 9, right? Get that on the screen, please. Jeremiah 33 verse 9. Let, let's read that one more time. Jeremiah 33 verse 9. Jeremiah 33 verse 9. Then it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth who shall, who shall what? Hear all the good that I do them. They shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and all the prosperity that I So they're going to hear it and they're going to see it. Keep on watching. Keep on clicking. Keep on laughing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to keep doing it because God is making you rich. Well, I don't see it yet. Well, when, 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 when my, my little girl, I don't know, where, where's my child? Back there in the back. When my little girl uh, is baking cookies, mm-hmm. right? right? Now, I don't see the cookies first. When, when I see her pull out uh, uh, her blender, her mixer, 
When I see her pull out some flour and some sugar, what are you doing? I'm making cookies. Now, you don't see the cookies yet. The, the batter ain't even done yet. The dough, whatever you call it. But what is she doing? Making cookies. Because there's a process. It, 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 it doesn't start with the finished product. It doesn't even start with the dough on the... It starts with just, okay, first thing I do is I got to pull out... I got to pull out this pan. I got to pull out this bowl. I got to pull out a spoon. And, and all along the way, what are you doing? I'm baking cookies. Put the flour in there. Put the sugar in there. Put the eggs in there. Put the butter in there. Put the whatever she puts in there, the baking soda or whatever. Put all in there. What are you doing? I'm making cookies. Stirring it up. Uh, whatever. Well, she got one of those high-profile mixes now. What are you doing? I'm making cookies. See, the, the phrase never changes. The phrase never changes. See, God is making you rich. Hey, he already started. <laughs> see, you, I, you, you don't, I don't see it all yet. It don't matter. He already started. Hey, hey, hey. And, and, and so she puts everything together and then she, 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 she lets, it, lets it sit for a while. Nothing's happening. No, no. What you doing? Making cookies. It's just sitting for a while. Anybody feel like there are times you feel like I'm just sitting for a while? This is about this morning. I, I don't know nothing wrong. I just feel like I'm just sitting. It's all right. It's all right. You you give you giving that time, that thing time to. Oh, uh, they, they, they call. I think I heard it. Proofing. Is that what it's called? Proofing. God is proofing you right now. You're. Golly, you're in the proofing stage even right now. Well, praise God, all right. Then, then when he's ready, then he starts scooping, he'll scoop you out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then he's going to scoop you out. He's going to scoop you out. He's going to scoop you out. And, and I watch it, she take and then she roll it in her hands. God is forming you and he's fashioning you he's shaping you and then you put it on the on the pan now I watch now what's she doing making cookies but the next stage is it's got to go into the heat you gotta you, you, you can't cook nothing without some fire You don't stop. <laughs> See, she just said it. You don't even smell anything until it hits the heat. Come on. Come on. It's in the heat. Yes. Yes. That, that, that fragrance, that aroma, that scent. That all those ingredients that have come together to form and shape that cookie. Yeah. All of a sudden now, you smell something. And see, what's happening, what's happening is they're starting to smell something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, We're becoming a sweet-smelling aroma in God's nostrils. My God. And right at about 11 minutes, she pulls it out. But it's still not ready to eat. She got to let it sit. And cool down. And what I found out, I found out the other night, that even while it's sitting, it's still cooking. What's she been doing? Making cookies. What's God been doing all this time? Making you rich. making you rich. See, and what's happening, we're all, we may all be at various stages right now in the process, but we're all being made rich. Come on, sir. 
All right. Y'all sit down. Sit down. He's making me rich. Glory to God. Uh, Proverbs 10, 22. You don't have to turn to it. I think you know it, right? The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. King James says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Maketh. See, you just don't know where you are in the process. But you are being maketh. You are. You, he is making you rich. The blessing is working on your life. And it is making you rich. It's just a process, baby. It's just a process. Glory to God. All right. Let's, let's look at something else here. Because this is good. See, you know, we've been talking about progressive transformation. See, it's progressive. It doesn't just happen overnight. I wish it did. But you don't really want wealth gained hastily. Because, because you, you, most of us aren't ready. Glory to God. You know, they tell you, you, don't, you, tell you, you really don't want to eat raw cookie dough. You, you really, they say, oh, that tastes good. But it's got eggs in it. They keep warning about salmonella and everything. They, you know, they warn about that stuff, raw meat and all that kind of stuff. But once you cook it, all those impurities are gone. All right? All right, 2 Corinthians. Y'all still there, 2 Corinthians? Look at chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes... He became. So he didn't start out poor. He became. That you through his poverty might become rich. You, you, it's something you become. He became poor. That you through his poverty might become rich. Um. Jesus became what we were Mm -hmm. so we could become what he was. You understand that? He became poor. We were poor. So we became rich like he was. And now you know he got those riches back too. He didn't just, he's not still poor. He's got all his riches back. Glory to God. Um, Amplified. Help me out on that, please. Amplified. It says, for you are becoming progressively acquainted. So that's progressive revelation. With, with and recognizing more strongly and clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, his kindness, his gracious generosity, his undeserved favor and spiritual blessing, in that, though he was so very rich... Yet for your sakes, he became so very poor in order that by his poverty, you might become enriched, abundantly supplied. See, he wasn't talking about rich in spirit. That chapter is about money. He's talking about you being abundantly supplied. I want to read another translation to you. And media, please forgive me because I didn't get you all my notes tonight. Uh, That's my bad. But I want to read from the Hawaii (laughs) Prigeon. Y'all ever heard of Hawaii Prison? And you heard of Hawaii Prison? No, you think you have? Okay. All right, so I'm reading from 2 Corinthians 8 9, as they call it, number two for the Corinth people. He says, You guys know that our boss, Jesus Christ, went and do plenty of good things for you guys. Before time, he was rich, but he went and come po for help you guys 
so that you guys can come rich. That's exactly, I'm not making that up. I'm not making that up. That's exactly how it reads. Hey, I don't care what language you read it in, how you say it. Bottom line is, you and I are becoming rich. Anybody, you have a Bible Gateway app or a Bible Gateway website, you know, any website, you can look up the Hawaii Pridgen version, and boy, I tell you, it'll keep you. It, you'll see the Bible in a whole new light. All right. Now, let's, let's get moving here. Let's get moving here. All right. Again, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 says, Beloved, he said, I pray that you may prosper. In all things, I pray that you may be successful in all things in every way. And then he said, and be in health or be whole, be sound, be in good health. I, you know, I don't want wealth and, and not health. I was visiting my good friend today in, at the uh, nursing home or wherever that is. So you call it ALF or whatever he's staying in, assisted living. And, uh, you know, to, there it's not, you know, it's not Medicaid. It's not, you know, it's, you got to have money to stay there. These are older people with money. It's a, different, it's a whole different kind of uh, uh, animal right there. And different kind of care. You know, it's, it's a different kind. Of, and, and I was there, and so these people got plenty of money, but they don't have any health. I don't want, I said, Lord, I'm sitting there, I said, Lord, I don't want this, no, no, no. I want health and wealth. I want health and wealth. There y'all go, health and wealth preaching. Yep. That's what Jesus said. I've been anointed to heal the brokenhearted. Bind up their, their wounds. Right? Open up blind eyes. That's health, ain't it? And preach the gospel to the poor. That's rich. Jesus was a health and wealth preacher. That's all he preached. He didn't preach sickness. I wish y'all would be sick for my glory. <laughs> Take a little flu for, for me. Take a little pneumonia for the glory of the Lord. No, no. Come on, sir. Everybody say, I'm healthy. I'm healthy. And I'm wealthy. And I'm wealthy. Now. Now. And forever. And forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't feel healthy. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the sick say I'm well. Let the poor say I'm rich. We call things that be not as though they were. That's how faith operates. We believe and therefore we speak. 2 Corinthians 4.13 calls that the spirit of faith. Right? All right. Now, so he says you're going to be in health, prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now, everybody understand, remember your soul is your mind, will, and your emotions. Your thinker, your chooser, and your filler. How you think, how you choose, how you feel. So my soul has to, prop, has to prosper. And so we're dealing with particularly this mindset, right? So my mind, my thinker needs to be right to prosper. Now, remember we looked at last, uh, two, two Wednesdays ago, rather, Proverbs 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7, which says, For as he thinks, or as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So you are what you think. In fact, that scripture you read it, he'll, he'll say, he'll say to you, oh yeah, eat it up, eat it up, you know, enjoy. But in his heart, he's really saying, oh man, you, you, you eating too much. When, when you leaving. And, and the... And the what, what they were saying in Proverbs was, hey, he's really what he thinks in his heart. He's not really what he's saying. He's really what he thinks in his heart. Not what he's saying. See, he's lying through his teeth. See, and some, and see that's, that's the issue. It, we can keep shouting about I'm rich, but if we don't get rich really in our heart, then yeah, you are lying through your teeth. But if you get rich 
now down, wealth down in your heart, then when you say, I am rich, even if it ain't manifested, you're not lying. Because the Bible says, as you think in your heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So is he. Yeah, Lord, that's right. Uh, you can have money manifested and still be poor. That's, that was the case in this marriage. Go, go back to 20, Proverbs 23. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at Proverbs 23, verse 6. Do not eat the bread of a... Do not eat the bread of a... Now, I didn't say of a poor man. Miser. Miser is a... Is a, is a, is a, is a and, and, let me add this. No desire his delicacies. Poor folk don't have any delicacies. Poor folk ain't serving no caviar. Poor folk ain't, they're not serving lobster tails and, you know, New York strip. They're not <laughs> filet mignon. They're not truffles. they not, that, that's not. So delicacies are, are, is the fare of rich man. But he's, the Bible says he's a miser. So in other words, in his hands, he had wealth. But in his heart, he was poor. That's why, even though he invites you to eat, it's, that's what it said, don't eat his bread, don't desire his delicacies, because as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Why? Because in his heart, he's still a broke man. He's poor in his heart. He's got a poverty mindset, though he has money. So if it's possible to have a poverty mindset, though you have money, it's possible to have a prosperity mindset if you have no money. Okay? And if we, if we would get the prosperity mindset, the money will come. Y'all with me on this here? Romans 12, 2, you know this one here. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. So what happens? Your mind is renewed. And for your mind to be renewed, uh, I'm sorry, once your mind is renewed, then you are transformed. So you can't be transformed without renewing your mind. You can't become something else without renewing your mind. Because as you think in your heart, so, so are you. You can't become a new person uh, without, uh, without uh, your mind being renewed. Okay? Now, let's look at this here tonight. Okay. Now, we've been taught in word of faith. Right? That our minds are renewed by the word of God. Is that right? So, and that's true. Our minds are renewed by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Our minds are renewed by the word of God. So that's why you got to meditate the word day and night. You'll make way prosperous. You'll have good success. Yes, you, you meditate his word day and night. You'll prosper wherever you go according to Psalm 1, verse 3. So, so when you meditate the word of God, it begins, that, that revelation begins to grow increasingly in you. And you begin to be transformed. So we're, as we renew our minds by the word of God, we are transformed. All right? Now, but here's what the Lord began to deal with, deal with me on yesterday. Okay. That wasn't, what hasn't been discussed enough uh -huh. within our camps are the other things that God uses to transform or to renew your mind. Right. Right. We know that God renews our minds by the word of God. Mm -hmm. But let's look at this in here again. I pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul, soul prospers. Now, your soul consists of your mind, will, and emotions, right? Yes, now, your mind is your thinker. Your will is your feeler. I'm sorry, your chooser. And your emotions is your feeler, how, what, what you feel. But let's focus on the mind here because we're going to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. mind. Now, remember, our mind is our thinker. So your mind thinks. As a man thinks in his heart, is really talking about in your mind. You have to think in your mind. Yes, sir. Now, uh, when you think, mm -hmm. thinking really is processing information. Thinking is processing information. Y'all follow me so far? 
All right, so my mind is renewed by the word of God. Okay, so to renew my mind, I think about the word of God, meditate on the word of God. That means the word of God, I'm thinking about the word of God. That's what meditation is. I'm just simply thinking about the word, thinking about the word of God, thinking about the word of God, thinking about God, thinking about God, thinking about God. Um, my mind is processing information I've re- I receive out of the word of God. But remember now, your mind, in, in the world, the world has a mind. And they're not looking at the word of God. Now, what we've been trained to do, listen to me very carefully here, is that when we get born again in the word of faith now, that we shut down our senses. We've been trained to do that. We've been trained, okay, you focus on the word of God, you don't live according to the sense realm. As we've been taught. But let's shake that up a little bit tonight. Because my faith does not depend on my senses. But my mind yes, sir. processes information. Yes, sir. Where does the information come to your mind from? Through your senses. Just walk with me tonight here. Let's take that tree up tonight. Okay? Now, I don't live by what I see. But I do need to see some things to live. I don't live by what I hear. But I do need to, to hear some things as I live. I don't live by how I feel. But I will feel as I live. So God doesn't, he never meant for us to shut down our sense perception. He just meant for us to not walk by sense perception. All right. Come on. We walk by faith, not by sense perception. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what I'm going to prove to you tonight for a few minutes is that God still uses your senses to get information to you in order to renew your mind. <laughs> Glory to God. Back to Hebrews 5. Watch this here. Boy, when the Lord begin to, to just load me up on this, man, it just, woo-wee. It kind of started accidentally, just talking to mom yesterday, and it's just, but it just, I just couldn't stop. I'm like, whoa, whoa, just, you just opened a valve here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hebrews 5, verse 14. Remember that verse. That's our key verse here. But solid food belongs to those who are of full full age. That is now. This is strong meat. Solid food, strong meat. This is this is this is the tough stuff. This is real revelation. Revelation belongs to those who are full age. And we like to think, well, we're strong meat people, and we are strong meat people, right? And it belongs to those who are full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses. Wait a minute. Those who have used their senses and their senses have been exercised. We can, let's use the instead of exercise, trained. To discern both good and evil. My senses? Wait a minute, I'm spiritual. I'm a spirit man. Yes, you are a spirit. Yes, sir. But you still live in a body. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. And if you if you and I will grow up. Come on now. Come on. Come on, sir. And use our senses. Uh Uh-huh. Not just use, train our senses. Our sins will be able to discern, distinguish between what's good and what's evil. You'll be like, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't look right. You can, you know, the Bible says, shun the very appearance of evil. Appearance is something you can see. I can see with my natural eyes. That don't look right. I I hear music. I hear something on TV that don't sound right. 
That's your natural ear heard that. Come on. Come on, sir. My senses have been trained to discern, to distinguish good and evil. Yes, sir. Got it? Yes, sir. Now, are, is everybody comfortable with that right now so far? Now, this good and evil, we're talking about uh, good things in terms of, of um, uh, what God says is right and, and evil things, what God says is wrong. So when you're walking with God, you ought to be able to, to at, at least discern, okay, that's not right, that's not right, this doesn't look right, whatever, or this is right. And the more you use it, um, when uh, my, my son is, is uh, he's uh, going to be a pitcher for his baseball team. And, and as a pitcher, and even all, all the, the little boys who they throw, we have them in practice. I want them to look assistant coaches. And, and we, have them, we have them, every practice, we're going to just throw. Throw. We're going to practice the same motion over and over and over again. What are we doing? We're training their muscles. It's called muscle memory. Their muscles will remember how you throw. So all, all of a sudden now they can do it in their sleep. Without thinking about it, their muscles remember this is how you throw. The muscles remember this is how you release. It's just like, yeah, Brother Tony taught us about, uh, about your signature. When, when, you, when, you, when you first were practicing your signature, when you were a little kid, you, you know, you practiced how to sign. Now, now somebody say, hey, hey can, can, can you come sign this check? You ain't even got to look at it. You just. It's muscle memory. You, you don't even think about it now because you've been trained right. through so many uses, so much use. All of y'all drove here tonight, right? Yes, sir. How many of y'all said, okay, what street do I turn down? Let me see. What do I do? No, you didn't even think about it. Most of us probably don't even, don't even really, really remember the trip here tonight. Because, because you, you, you're, everything about your senses, your senses have been trained. Your eyes already know. When, when, I, when my eyes see that store, that corner store right there, I'm turning left. In other words, they can take down all the street signs. And your senses will still get you here. See, you, you, you and I are meant to train our senses to discern good and evil, all right? Now, let's look at a scripture here. Glory to God. Isaiah 5, verse 20. Isaiah 5, verse 20. Everybody say good, good. and evil. And evil. Isaiah 5, verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So in other words, you and I need to know the difference between good and evil. Bitter and sweet. Light for dark. How are you going to know the difference? Your senses. Whoa. Know the Holy Ghost. He didn't say it by the Holy Ghost, you know. Now we know the Holy Ghost is our God and our teacher. But he says... The more you use this, your senses will become discerning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right, is this helping you tonight? Yes. Your senses can discern good and evil. All right, now, let's, let's move on here. Go to Proverbs 10, please. Because I want to expand, if you allow me, our definition of good and evil. Proverbs 10. That's the, that's the chapter there. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. Proverbs 10, verse 15. You got it? Yes. The rich man's wealth. wealth is his strong city. Is that good or bad? That's good, that's good. That's good ain't it? <laughs> the destruction of the poor is their poverty. Is that good or evil? evil. Poverty is evil. Destruction is evil. I don't care what country you're in. I don't care what language you speak. Destruction is evil. So wealth then is good. Poverty is evil. In fact, one translation I, I read and I wrote, it, I wrote it down here in my Bible that poverty ruins lives. Poverty ruins lives. Poverty ruins marriages. Poverty ruins business. It ruins cities. It ruins, ruins nations. Ruin school systems, it'll ruin everything. 
All right? So poverty is evil. Everybody say poverty is evil. Poverty. All right, look at Ecclesiastes, the next book over. Chapter 10. Ecclesiastes 10. Verse 5. You get it? Say, I got it. I got it. I got it. There is an evil I have seen under the sun yeah. as an error proceeding from the ruler. Mm-hmm. Folly or foolishness is set in great dignity while the rich sit in a lowly place. I have seen servants on horses while princes walk on the ground like servants. He said that's evil. For princes to be on the, on the ground walking while servants are on the horses. Now you understand, you and I in the body of Christ, we're the princes. The world is the servants. But right now we got things flip flop. We got things backward. They're, they're on the horses. They're on the yachts. They're on the jets. They're, they're on the beachfront property. They're, they're on the top floor. <laughs> While the princess. That's evil. All right. You don't, don't turn there, but you can uh, think about Genesis chapter 1 when, when God created the whole, the heavens and the earth. And all throughout his creation, those first six days, he, he created something and he said, the Bible says, and God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. Then you get to chapter 2 and he, uh, and he says, and um, God saw the man was alone. He said, that is not good. Well, it was not good. It's evil. He said, no, that's, that's, not, that's not good. That, it's not good for that man to be alone. That's not good. <laughs> God could tell the difference between good and evil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. The way the earth was before God uh, recreated everything, it was evil. Earth was void without form. Darkness covered the face of the earth. Oh, that ain't good. He didn't say anything was good until he formed everything. And said, okay, now that's good. that's good. He turned things around. Now, so you and I need to start uh, being able to discern what's good and what's evil. Yes, sir. And right now I'm talking about prosperity. Stand tall, man of God. I, I'm, I'm, I, think, I think we pretty much got it down now as to knowing that if somebody beating somebody to death, that's evil. That's evil. We know if somebody's sleeping around, that's evil. We, we know that. We know, we know the rump shaker music, that's evil. We, you know what I'm saying? We, we ain't got to go over You know, we ain't got to go over that. We, and, and, and hopefully, hopefully, we're all past that. See, it, don't, it doesn't take much maturity to understand that because the moment you get born again, the Holy Spirit now lives in you. He's going to be your, your guy, your check. That ain't right. That ain't good. But when you become mature, full age, the one, the sons who are ready to be revealed, you need to know what's good and evil. And this is not talking about just sin anymore. This is knowing, okay, that's not proper right there. I ain't supposed to be sick. See, the church still calling good evil and evil good. Oh, Sister Mary. Oh, she dealing with that cancer. God's getting glory. No, that's evil. God ain't getting no glory, no cancer. See, but they're calling good evil and evil good. But you and I got to be able to discern by use of our senses. Amen. All right, and I want to show you something here. All right. Now, our senses aren't supposed to be overlooked. Let me read this just like I got it. Our senses aren't, senses aren't supposed to be overlooked. Our senses have to be trained to distinguish between good and evil. This is only accomplished through use or practice. Got it? Now, I'm going to show you how we practice this here tonight. In order to get his people to think on his level, God didn't just speak to them internally. He dealt with their senses. 
We're going to take this tree tonight. We're going we gonna to knock over the sacred cow tonight. Now watch this. Satan uses our sense realm to bring fear. And see, that's, that's why the word of faith we teach, don't go by your sense realm, the sense realm, because it's going to breed fear. Satan uses the sense realm to bring fear. But God uses the same sense realm to stir our faith. You want to go prove it tonight? All right, go back to the book of Numbers. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. The fourth book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Let's prove it that God uses our sense realm to stir faith. And Satan will use the same sense realm to stir fear. Numbers chapter 13. And I'm going to start right at verse 1. You get it? Got it? Got it. Good. I'll tell your neighborhood. All right, verse, verse 1. Numbers 13, verse 1. And the Lord, who's talking? The Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, who's talking? The Lord. So everything we read is going to be from the Lord. It's going to be instruction from the Lord. Send men to what? How do you spy? You got to look with your eyes. Now God has already told them, I have given you the land. Before they left Egypt, God told them, I'm giving you the land. While they're marching through the wilderness, he told them again, I'm giving you the land. But he got to stir their faith yes, sir. because because they 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 they, they lollygagging on this thing here. So he says to stir your faith up. Yes, sir. I need you to go put your eyes. This will help somebody here tonight. There, there, you 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 God, I need a house. Well, you lollygagging about your house. Go put your eyes on something. God said, send me in this by the land of Canaan, which I am giving. Uh-huh. See, he told them this. You would think, well, just the word of the Lord should have been enough. <laughs> See, this is this what, this what we've been teaching. Now, I'm not knocking what we've been teaching. I just, I just want to make sure we teach uh, adequately. We, we teach fully because, because we got folk. Well, I, I just got a word. That's it. That's great that you got a word, but but God needs you sometimes on, to get you to just to see what he's saying. Come on. Come on. Elijah said to his servant, you remember Elijah in, 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 uh, in 1 Kings 18, they went up on Mount Carmel and they had the showdown. The Lord, the God who answered by fire, let him be God, right? So now they won the battle and he, he now tells, this is after the famine ends. In chapter 17, there was a famine. That's why, that's why Elijah was at the, at the brook yes. right. and he went down to, to the, the widow's house. Right. There's a famine. Now, now after they, the people finally repent in 1 Kings 18, now Elijah says, tell the servant, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. He said, he said I hear the abundance of rain. Yes, sir. I hear. But he told his servant, go see if you can see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Yeah. What? This the man of God got a word. He ain't seen it. He he heard it in his spirit. I hear rain coming. But I need you to go see. Remember the servant came back. I don't see anything. Go back again. I know what I heard in here, but I want some visual evidence. See? No, just all you need is the word. Yeah, the word is what you stand on. Yes, sir. The word, even if you never see anything, you have to stand on the word. Yeah. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes to stir your faith up, yes, sir. just to stir it up. Yes, sir. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but it gets stirred up yes, sir. when you start seeing a little bit of progress. Oh, something's happening here. Oh, something's happening. Oh, some, something's moving here. See, it gets stirred up. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So finally, that, that servant had to go back and forth, back and forth, till he finally said, uh, hey, I see, I see a cloud, but it's just about the size of a man's hand. He said, oh, yeah. Something happening now. Wait, wait, wait. He already had it in his spirit. But when that man said, I saw something, all right, let's ride on this. See, now sit down, sit down. So he says, Send me in this part of the land, which I'm giving to the children of Israel. Uh-huh. All right? Go, go down, uh-huh. second time, verse 17. Yes, sir. Verse 17. Yes, sir. Can we just ride out with this here? Right. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way to the south and go up into the mountains and see what the land is like. Go check it out. Oh, don't, don't mess with that yet, because I'm, I'm going to deal with that. Maybe next week, I don't know. Whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they shall that, uh, they inhabit are like camps or stronghold, whether the land is rich or poor, so on, so on, so forth. Look at what he says at the end of verse twenty, and bring some of the fruit of the land. Uh-huh. Why would he ask for fruit? So we can see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. Moses, God already told you the land is yours. I know. Bring some fruit. Yes, sir. Now, this is by divine instruction. Yes, sir. Moses didn't just speak it on his own. Right, right, right. God's told him to do this. Tell him, bring some fruit so yes, to prove to my people yes. what I'm saying. Yes. God wants you to have some evidence. Yes, sir. Glory to God. That's good, sir. Good. Verse 26. Verse 26. Now, they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and uh, at Kadesh. They brought back word to them, all the congregation, and showed them the fruit. Yes, they said, well, yeah, we went down, and truly it flows with what? Milk and honey. And this is his fruit. So now the people all see something. Verse 28. Remember I told you Satan uses the same sense round. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, come on. Nevertheless, nevertheless, see, if they hadn't went and seen that pastor, they would have had a nevertheless. The people were, God was trying to get them over into real stirred up faith from the beginning. Right, right. Yes, Nevertheless, the people dwelling in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large, so on and so forth. Let me keep going now. Verse 30. Caleb quieted the people and said, hey, let's go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's faith there. The spirit of faith working it. Now watch. Let me go down all the way down to verse 33. There we saw, this is the, the negative report people. There we saw, we saw the giants. The descendants, of, the, the, the descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. What he's really saying is, we think in our heart. See, they still had grasshopper in their heart. So when they... Ten men saw the same thing as Joshua and Caleb. But Joshua and Caleb had giant in their heart. But these ten men had grasshopper in their heart. So though though they saw the same thing, the grasshopper heart men became grasshoppers. Uh They said, we're like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. So, since round. God uses the sense realm to stir their faith up, to to, uh, solidify, to validate, to verify what he's trying to show you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if your senses are trained, Mm -hmm. you can discern good and evil. Mm -hmm. Joshua and Caleb discern good and evil. Remember what, what the Bible said? That Joshua and Caleb, because they are of another spirit, I'm going to take them into the land. These other ones, they can't go in there. But Joshua and Caleb, they are of another spirit. Yes, sir. They got the spirit of faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. So, now, did Joshua and Caleb see the giants too? Yeah. But it didn't matter. They saw the exact same things. Come on. The point is, God uses the sense realm. Go to the book of Judges. Judges chapter 7. 
You remember the story of Gideon, Judges chapter 6? God picks up with, with Gideon, tells him, hey, you're going to go down there and uh, you're going to uh, whoop, whoop tail for me and we're going yeah. we're gonna, to we're gonna <laughs> deliver Israel from the Midianites. Yeah. All right. Glory to, Glory to God. Let you open a can of whoop on the Midianites for me. <laughs> now, you remember uh, 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 Gideon is a little bit afraid here. He's... He's not sure about his status. Okay. But here in Judges chapter 7. Uh, in fact, Judges chapter 6. Verse 36. So Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hands, as you have said, look, I shall put a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only and it is dry on the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. Now, go to Word of Faith Church. We all say boo, boo, boo. Because he's trying to operate in the sense realm. And we say, don't do that. Now, I agree now that we have the Holy Spirit. We don't have to fleece God. So we don't need to be, you know, I'm going to fleece God about the situation. No, 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 no. You and I have the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, I have the Holy Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit. I believe what he says. I believe what he says. But God will work with me. But God will work with me. Let me show you. Go down to chapter 7, verse 9. This is after he's dwindled down from 32,000 to 300. Wait, stop. Don't, don't look. Look at, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Y'all going to read ahead of me. I know, I know y'all. Y'all going to read ahead of me. Now, when God is dealing with him with the fleece, he's got 32,000 men at his disposal. So he's not sure with 32,000. God comes and says, let's put a, have a couple of little tests here. Because 32,000 is too many for me to get glory. So let's, let's whittle this number on down here. First time they whittle them on down, they cut 22,000 out the first day. How many of y'all scared? All right. Y'all go home. 22,000 left. I mean, that was just easy test. Y'all scared? <laughs> I'm scared, boss. 22,000 went on home. So now he's got 10,000. God says, all right, but that's still too many for me to get glory. He says, take them down there, you know, to the brook and have them. Uh, drink from the brook, the lap with a, like a dog. So y'all know the story. And so they go from 10,000 now down to 300. Now he fleeced the Lord back when he had a full army. He fleeced the Lord. Lord said, you can do it. He's all right. I'm good. I'm good now. I'm good. I got full army of people. I fleece the Lord is good. But now he's down to 300. What's he going to do now, boss? Well, he doesn't fleece God. But God wants to help him out. Yes, now look at verse 9. And it happened on the same night. This is after that. They went down to 300. The same night that the Lord said to him, the Lord's talking now. Arise, go down against the camp for, read it. I have delivered it. Stop, look up. Now that should be enough. God has said. I delivered it into your hand. God has said it is done. Man, what, me and my 300, we're going to ride out, boy. We about to, woo, we about to mount up. Let's go, let's go bust up the place. Right? But watch God. Verse 10. But if you are afraid to go down, go down to the camp with Pura, your servant. Now God's about to help him out in the sense realm. And you shall, huh? Wait, now he already heard what God said. But God said, I want to really increase and stir up your faith. So now I want you to hear. Now the first heard, he heard with his spiritual ears in his heart. But now he says, I want you to go out to the camp because you're going to hear with your natural ears. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. See? We, I don't go by what I hear. I understand that. I understand what we're trying to say. But God will work with you. Yes, sir. My God. Wow. That's good. He said, and you shall hear what they say. Uh-huh. And afterward, your hands shall be strengthened. Yes. After what? After you hear what they say. Huh? Your hands will be strengthened after what? Yes. Well, his hands went strong after he heard what God said. But see, God settling his soul down. Wow. 
So he said, after you hear what they say, your enemy, after you hear with your natural ear what they say, your hands are going to be strengthened. You're going to be, oh, all right. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, to the outposts of the armed men who were in the camp. Now the Midianites and the Malachites, all the people of the east were lying in the valley as numerous as locusts. As numerous as locusts. Now he only got 300. And their camels were without number. He only got 300 men. As the sand by the sea shall multitude. He's got 300. The Lord, thank you for your word. But God's going to give him more than his word. What? God's going to give him more than just his word. And when Gideon had come, there was a man telling a dream to his companion. He said, I have had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf of barley bread tumbled into the camp of the Mid of Midian. It came to a tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned and the tent collapsed. Verse 14. Then his companion answered and said, this is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. Into his hand, God has delivered Midian and the whole camp. And so it was when Gideon heard. With these right here, with these right here, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshiped. Woo oh, God, I, I worship you. I glorify you now. Oh, praise God. I believe you are God. You are with us. Not until after he heard with his natural ears. He returned to the camp of Israel and now he said, now he's talking big. Arise! Talking to his 300. For the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into your hand. Praise God. Now he's talking bad. He. Chest up, look out. Because not only has he heard the word of the Lord in here, now he's heard the word of the enemy out here. God was so loving, so willing to work with him. That he gave him a little piece of evidence. Y'all got a few more minutes. Now, I want to give you a few more, a couple more examples. I don't have much time. Of, of the fact that your senses are instrumental in progressive transformation. You cannot progressively transform into a rich person without using your senses. And God has given you these senses for a reason. Glory to God. Let me give you one example here about, about what you see. Genesis 15. Genesis 15. God's trying to enlarge Abraham. He's trying to get Abraham to understand what he, what he wants to do in his life. And Abraham's thinking real small. Genesis 15 and uh, verse 2, Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? Verse 3, Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. He's trying to get God to see something in the natural. God's talking. He's giving him spiritual uh, word here. So, but look at what God does. Verse 5, God's going to help Abraham out. Then he brought him outside. Now, he's been talking to him in, in his spirit. Right. Then he brought him outside and said, look. look. Now, what are you going to look, look with? His natural eyes. Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to them, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord. Wait a minute. God been talking to this guy all this time in here. But when he finally showed him something in the natural, he could see with his natural eyes, it clicked. His natural eyes allowed him, him to click over into a mindset, oh, I am a father of many nations. Oh, God is going to do what he said he's going to do. He believed in the Lord. What? <laughs> he believed in the Lord after he saw something. All right. Now, here's what I want to get to you, and, I, and I'll, I'll try to finish this next week. God wants... He, he wants to use your sense realm 
to develop your, uh, your taste for prosperity. God uses our sense realm to develop our taste for prosperity. Many people in the body of Christ don't yet have a taste or desire for prosperity because they don't, they, they don't, reckon, they don't discern yet good and evil. All right. <laughs> if you've been eating guatney hot dogs your whole life, or whatever the Walmart brand is, you know, just, I'm, not, I'm not picking on that. You can eat whatever hot dog you want to eat. But what I'm saying is, if, if you eat, if you eat, let me just say, low quality, yeah, okay. you know, if, if, they, if they come, you know, two packs for $2, <laughs> trust me, it's not really good quality. I, I, not many hot dogs are really good quality if we're going to talk about hot dogs. But just understand, I'm just, I'm just using hot dogs as an like, example. But when you, when you get a, a different type of hot dog, yes. and, and that the skin... Uh, pops when you, you know, it snaps when you, and, and the meat isn't mushy. All of a sudden, you know the difference between good and bad, don't you? How'd you learn the difference? By your spirit? By your senses. And God's trying to move us to a higher level of hot dog. He's he, he, he trying to move you to a higher level of hot dog. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying to you. I know that may seem comical, but I'm, I'm very serious about this. If you've never tasted anything better, that's why the Bible said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste, taste and see, experience. Taste and see. Those are two cents words. That the Lord is good. So, the opposite of good is evil or bad. So, God's going to use your senses to help you discern between what's good and bad. Glory to God. He, he wants you to use your senses to help you to go to another level. I was, I was sharing with, with, with my mom yesterday about... about uh, Smell. I, I used to walk through, uh, when I'd go to the mall, you know, as a kid, young teenager, young adult, you always wanted to go to the mall, right? We'd always want to go to the mall. Back before I had a car, you get on a bus, you go to the mall. You get a car, what we do on the weekend, we know, we're going to the mall. And I go to the mall, and you walk all through the mall, but um, you, if, if I walked in Dillard's, you walk in Dillard's, and it, it has a smell, a fragrance, right? And that fragrance uh, used to intimidate me because that fragrance, which which comes through my olfactory nerves, that is a big word for you, olfactory senses here, in my mind said, I can't afford this. In my mind, it, so, so I equated that smell with I'm out of my league. I equated that smell with this is beyond where, where I am. I said I used to. But now as God has developed me and prospered me and just really changed my mind. Now that smell that used to be intimidating is inviting. It's intriguing. It's, it's almost intoxicating. It's a, yeah, yeah. It, it, it tells me this, I, I, this is where I want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. So what's happened over time is God, see, this, this, this may be trivial to you, but God has used a smell to draw me, to change my mindset. See, because Kmart didn't have a smell. And Walmart didn't have a smell. But I was comfortable there. And, and, and I'm not, nothing wrong with Walmart and Kmart. It's just what I'm saying is that in my mind, Dillard's, and, and you know, I've learned there's more than Dillard's now. You know, there's, you know, there's Nordstrom's and Neiman Marcus and, you know, those kind of places like that. But I'm talking about just, just where, where I've been working on here. 
Oh, well, really what God's been working on me. That, 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 that smell said I, I didn't belong, but now that smell says I belong here. Using smell. Woo. Go to, uh, man, let me give you, let me give you one of these. Exodus 30. Exodus 30. No, no, go to, go to, I don't have time to cover Exodus 30. That's a long one. Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27. Will y'all come back next week for this? Yes. Proverbs 27. Glory to God. I'm telling you, I, God, he's going to help you and I to become more keenly aware of what's going on around us. Proverbs 27, verse 9. Ointment and perfume delight the heart. Huh? Now, you don't smell with your heart. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't miss, you didn't catch that. Ointment and perfume delight the heart. Now you smell with your nose. Your scent, but what is affected is your heart. They, they delight the heart. I remember when, um, Pastor Durbin and mom first came down here in, I think it was 09, and, you know, I was kind of still standoffish, like, you know, what does this dude here, you doing here, you know, long hair white man from Kentucky, you know, we got him preaching in our church, this don't make no sense. But after, after a, a, a couple times, God let me know, that's your dad. And uh, I knew that, no doubt about it. And I remember probably the first time after they came, the first time they came after God had made that connection in the spirit. We went shopping. We went to Tyrone Mall. And uh, he and I went to, because uh, uh, Pastor Kim and Mama Bird, they were doing their thing. We, we couldn't keep up with them. <laughs> but uh, Dad and I went to, it's a fragrance shop in there somewhere. And uh, he, because he, he loves cologne. So he was buying all these different colognes. And he said, man, let, let's get, get you some, get you some. And I said, no, 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 because I, you know, I don't ask anybody for nothing. I don't, you know, I don't try to, I don't try to pull off anybody. And uh, he said, no, 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 you get, get some. I'll, I'll get you some. So uh, he went and he, he grabbed a couple of them, colognes for me. And he said these words, I'll never forget them. Okay. He said, you need to smell rich. I'll come over here. He said, see, he said to me, you need to smell rich. Now, I didn't have anything in my hand. Didn't have anything in my pocket. As a matter of fact, I know, because that, that, Weekend they were here. That's what my, my wife and I we scraped up a thousand dollars for our breakout seed. And you remember that? I mean, sown in tears, but we broke out now. So I didn't have anything deep, come on, come on. But he he was saying something to me, yeah. He says, You need to smell rich. I got it. I understood, Miguel. Wait. Ointment and perfume delight the heart. Certain colognes and perfumes, they don't do anything for you. They just, you know, just they don't they almost just irritate you. But there are some colognes. Some perfumes move you and and you'll you'll walk a little different, right? You like Am I right about this here? Well, pastor, 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 I can't afford that. That's why they give away free samples still. You can go in, in Sephora, you can go in JCPenney, you can go in Dillard sometime, whatever, and, 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 and get the little spray bottles or whatever. And if they don't get a spray bottle, let them spray it on the car, wipe the car on you, whatever. Because, because see, it does, you don't, you, you got to understand this here. Oh, oh, I, I, I just love brute. That's evil, man. That's evil. That's evil. That's evil. That's evil. Old Spice, that's evil, man. Y'all stop. I, I, I'm an English leather man. English leather my butt, man. Come on, man. English leather. That, that does not say rich.
Y'all got to hear what I'm saying to you here. See, don't, don't underestimate the power of the senses that God, cre- God created these senses. There's a scripture here. Can, can I give you one more? John 12. John 12. John 12. John 12. Tell your neighbor, you need to smell rich. No, I'm telling you, hear this. My dad said that, and I'll never forget it. You need to smell rich. Go in there and... Go in there and, and find out what's, what's, the, what's the hottest, what's the best, and just, may I get a, may I get a sample of that, please? I'm, I'm considering. Can I have a couple different samples I'm considering? They'll give it to you. Just use it sparingly. Make, now, you got to make sure you bathe. You bathe and then spray that, that cologne on. You still have to bathe, right? I, I want to reiterate, bathe every day. All right, John 12, John 12. This is Jesus. He's at, he's at uh, uh, the home with uh, Mary and Lazarus and so forth. Verse 3. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard. What kind of, what was this? Very costly. Come on. Anointed the feet of Jesus. And wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Now, now watch. It says very costly because the Holy Spirit is telling us this. But they don't know it. The people, the people don't know what's in that, in that flask. Only Mary knew what was in that flask. They didn't, they didn't know if that was just regular old motor. They didn't know what was in that flask. Oh, you know, they, they, they don't know what's in there. They don't know what's in there until she pours it. When she pours it, the fragrance fills the room. Now watch, watch, watch. Verse 4, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who betrayed him, said, Why was this fragrant oil... Not so, three hundred dinar. How does he know how much this oil costs? Because the scent, the fragrance gave it away. That this is not just your everyday cheapo Walgreens perfume here. This is. They smell. Wait, wait. That that smells. That smells different. That smells. Somebody so he put a dollar figure on it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's about, that's, that smell like my three hundred dollars. In other words, you can smell rich. That, he said that smells like money. Judas's senses were discern, were trained to discern. Oh, this, Pastor, this is so, you talking so much material. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, God didn't give you these senses for no reason. And when you got saved, he didn't say turn these senses off. All right, I, 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 let me give you one more. This is the last, this is the last one. I, I, I'm going to shorten it, but I'll, I'll give it to you. you. You can take this home. Exodus 30. Exodus 30. Exodus 30. I'll give it to you. You can take it home. Take it home. I'm going to say something here. You might get mad at me, but you'll be glad once you get it. Okay, 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 okay. Exodus 30, verse 22. Are you there? Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also take for yourself cheap old spices. Huh? Oh, quality. Quality. God told Moses... 
take quality. Now this is, now what, what's about to happen is he's about to have them put together the oil for ministry. But he said this oil for ministry, you better have some quality spices. 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, have as much sweet smelling, sweet smelling cinnamon. 250 shekels of sweet smelling cane. 500 shekels of acacia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary and hen of olive oil. You shall make these from these a holy anointing oil and ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it, you shall anoint the tabernacle of the meeting of, and the ark of the testimony. So you, you want to anoint all the articles, God, you, that you use to worship me. He, he's demanding that what you bring, use to worship me must have a quality aroma. In other words, in other words, watch this, watch this. I'm going to go read one more verse, one more verse. Verse 30, verse 30. And you, now this is the same oil. And you shall anoint Aaron and his sons with the same oil. And consecrate them that they may minister to me. Oh my God. He said, bad smell, bad odors, odor, fragrance that's not quality, does not minister to me. In other words, God says, only quality ministers to me. Only what's, what's really nice Ministers to me. Only that's what God's only what's rich ministers to me. And the church, we've been trying to minister to God, broke, broke down, busted, disgusted, halfway doing stuff, halfway looking in the No, he said that don't minister to me. He said, make, make some quality stuff. And then, then he told him this. He said, when you make this oil here, he said, don't you, don't you copy this and use of anything else. He says, this is my signature scent. God had his own signature scent. You can't, don't copy this. Go, don't go out on no date putting this on your neck. No, 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 no. This is specifically to minister to me. I don't have time to go into it, but you go to Exodus uh, 39 uh, or whatever, 30, 36, somewhere over there. I, I'll just tell you where it is so you know. You read it in your own time. 30, uh, thir 39, I was right, 39, and God tells him how, how to, what kind of garments to put on the priest. He said, make them put on blue and purple and scarlet. He said, he said, take gold and hammer gold down so thin you use gold as thread. He said, put, make sure you put on quality fine linen on my priest. Yes. What's the priest's job? To minister to the Lord. Yes. He said, so I don't want the priest coming to me with any kind of mess on because that does not minister to me. Oh, God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Last one. Philippians 4, verse 18. Watch this. Indeed, this is Paul talking about the church's gift to him. Indeed, I have all in abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. God is pleased with a sweet-smelling aroma. Amen. Remember God said, your sin stinks in my nostrils? God still uses his senses. Yo, sin, he says, stinks in my nostrils. But when you do things well pleasing, he said, oh, that's a sweet smelling aroma to me. God is interested in, he only wants to see his people in, in quality. In. Now, I'll, I'll go into this more next week. Next week, because I want to show you more about that uh, sight and smell, about taste. About hearing. See, this is why I didn't Gershom. And see, this is the Lord was hammering me about this a couple days ago. I, I talk about boy driving a Bentley 
or Rolls Royce Phantom. But I've not went and sat in one. See, so right now it's really just all talk. Because until I until I sit in one and feel the butter le buttery leather. Till I smell the Rolls Royce scent. They, they, have, they have their own signature scents. Till I get to see the fine appointments in the cabin. Till I hear the quietness of when they close the doors and I don't hear anything outside the doors. When I Now my senses. Oh. This is what it feels like. Now all of a sudden, oh, my heart. That's, that's why you got to go to the open house. Don't just talk about it. You got to go. Go spot a land. Go see it. Try on the clothes. It's free. It's free. It's free. To <laughs> my wife and, and mom and they took the girls. They went over to uh, what's that new mall in Sarasota? Was that where it was, Sarasota? And they went over in uh, what was that Section Fifth Avenue? And uh, they just they just, let, they just they just let them try on stuff. Touch it. Try it on. Here, take a take a picture. And the people just bring you stuff. Yeah, they just. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, they weren't ready to buy anything just yet. But once you touched it and felt, you know, there's different grades of leather. You know, there's different grades of cotton. When God was getting, before he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, God told Moses, he said, this is what I'm going to do, Moses. I'm going to give you favor with the Egyptians. Right? He says, Tell the women, go and ask all the neighbors for all their stuff. He said, I'm going to give you a favor with them. They're going to give it to you. They're going to give you gold, silver, and apparel. And he said, when you get it, put it on your children. See, because these children had never known prosperity. They were born into slavery. So he said, but I'm trying to take them into the promised land. I, I, I want, I, I'm trying to take them somewhere where there's going to be milk and honey and everything's going to be nice. So before they go, put them on those clothes. Let them wear that gold. Let them wear that silver so they get a prosperity mindset. So they know where they're going. And do you not know? That when it came time to go into, into the promised land, it wasn't those adults who made it in. It was those children who had grown, who had now grown up for 40 years with a prosperity mindset. What? Their sisters were trained. Come on. Let them feel it. Let them, let them feel that Egyptian cotton. So now you develop a prosperity mindset. So, uh, so part of our process is training our senses. Did y'all receive that tonight? Yeah. Well, let the Lord know you received that. Give God a great hand of praise. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ooh, God. Ooh, God. Smells like prosperity. Yeah. Looks like prosperity. Sounds like prosperity. Feels like prosperity. Mm. You find out prosperity has a taste to it. I may not get to it next week, so let me just say it now. When the children of Israel were going into the promised land, he said, I'm sending you to a land that flows with milk and honey. Right? So on the way there, he feeds them with manna. Mm -hmm. Manna, the Bible said, was, was coriander seed, white like coriander seed milk. 
And it said it tastes like honey. Why didn't God make it taste like cream cheese? He's getting them used to the taste of honey. I want you to taste honey now. Because where I'm taking you going to be a land fluent. See, I'm giving you just a wafer of it now. But where you're going is going to be a land that flows with it. And you not be, you won't be ready for the flow of honey if you never tasted honey. He wants you to taste it first. Try it. Try it. So I can take you to where it's going to flow and it won't shock you. What is this? Oh, no. I know this. This is honey. It's honey. I've tasted it. Yeah, 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 it is yeah. honey. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. Did you have something? I'm looking at you. I got a sense. My sense is discerned. Get, get the microphone there real quick. Y'all, this is, this is good to me. Now, let me tell you something. I, I'm, not, I'm not one of them guys that try to act like I'm the only one with revelation in the world, but I ain't never heard this before. I ain't never heard this before. I ain't never heard anything like this. Now, I'm sure it's been preached somewhere. Just, you know, everybody ain't on TV. So, you know, somebody in, in, in Georgia probably preaching this right now. But I'm just saying, I've never heard it. So, this is to help all of us. The Lord said the purpose for manifestation. He says, I began working with your senses a while ago. He says, by the many things that I have caused to come to pass, the manifestation of cars, houses, monies, right. debt-free cancellations happening right here in the midst of you. These things happen so that you would know that I am moving and I am moving for you too. Yes. Do not be envious of what you see, but yell out, do it for me too, God. Won't I do it for you too? This is the house that I have set my love on. My desire is for you all. Hear me now. I have already done it for you. Just grab it with your heart and you will see it and you will see it soon, says the Lord. At the end of it, he said, pay attention to the caliber of the things that he's granted. He said he didn't start in hundreds. He started in thousands when he canceled debt. He said he didn't start with small cars. He started with luxury cars. He said, pay attention to the caliber that I'm sending in this house. The first debt-free car we saw was a, a brand new Lexus. 2007 Lexus that God granted in 2006. That's the first car he showed us. We, we were being taught that God could do this, but then he let us see it with our eyes. My goodness. My goodness. Grab hands with your neighbor. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Give them one of those anointing squeezes in their hand. <laughs> You're holding hands with a multimillionaire. It don't look like it. Well, now it's just flour and sugar and butter. It's just, but it's still a cookie. It's still cookies. <laughs> still cookies. But you watch. The time is coming. And what I've been smelling, it's gonna come out. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you tonight. Father, thank you so much that revelation flows freely in this house. 
and your people are mature enough to accept it and receive it. That they're mature enough to grab a hold of it and not resist and reject it, God. Thank you that, Lord, you are doing something so supernatural in, on the inside of us. You said it were the Father. You work in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Your word said that you have begun a good work in us. You've begun a good work. You've begun a good work. And you shall perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. We thank you that, God, you're making us out to be who you've already called us to be. You declare the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, I thank you tonight that, Lord, we have begun to prosper. And we will continue to prosper until we become very prosperous. And we will be light in this dark world. And the Gentiles shall come to our light. And the kings of the brightness of our rising. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, thank you that we will be uh, a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Lord, there was a prophetic word spoken over this house, Lord, a couple years back. That the prosperity you were pouring in this house was going to be so evident that people were going to come just to see what they've been hearing. They're going to hear and see about the cars and the houses and the businesses and the buildings and the manifestation. And they will come and run right into Jesus. God, we thank you for that prophetic word that this is the time now for it to come to pass. Woo! Yeah, Lord. God, do it. Do it, do it. We want to make sure we glorify Jesus in all we do. So when the riches increase, we won't set our hearts on them. Our hearts are set on Jesus to glorify and exalt and worship his name. God, I thank you that, God, you're making us rich and righteous. And we're becoming the enemy's worst nightmare. Yes, yes. Oh, what can you do with rich and righteous people? But change the whole world. God, thank you that we'll be useful to you in your kingdom. So we come up and we receive. God, I just pray tonight that you continue to bring it to pass in our lives. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Jesus, match this name. God, I pray that as your people leave tonight from this place, that your presence continues to go with us that your hand would be upon us, that you bless us indeed. And God, may you preserve our going out. May you preserve our coming in. From this time forth, even forevermore we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Sunday morning. Glory to God. Be listening.